G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. We're still pressing on with our wings, but this week we need to get stuck into some fuel. We've got two tonne of dead diesel sitting underneath Brewpeg. We need to make sure that we can rescue it. So the fuel process that we're going to use, this old beast down here, we built it a wee while ago. We're going to try and remove all the particulates, water and other junk, filter it down to one micron and send it off to the lab for fuel testing. So in these big IBCs, um, there's a thousand litres each of diesel. We need to fix this diesel. So it's been underwater, it's been in metal tanks, it's been getting hot and cold, and there's been condensation, there's been seawater immersion, there is uh, mud and other such lovely things. So everything that could be done to this diesel to kill it has been done. However, I reckon we can save it. Maybe. We'll have a go. Anyway. So today we need to figure out if we can process this fuel so it's a good enough quality so that we can use it in Brewpeg. To do that we've got a fuel lab down in the southern end of the country that we're going to send some samples down to and get them to test it for us and tell us what parts of the fuel are good and what parts are bad. That'll overall give us a rating of yes or no if we can use it. Now there's a trick we're going to do to try and process this fuel before we send it. I'll show you what we're doing. Some of you might recognise this. This is our vacuum fuel processor. So we built this to be able to process our veggie oil so that we could burn it in brew pig. Now it's a pretty simple gadget. There's a, a link up in the corner of the screen now and that's the, the full episode on how we built this so you can have a real good idea of what it is. But basically it's a 90 litre tank with a bag filter on the top left and a bag filter on the top right. One of them's 10 micron, one of them's one micron and we've got a vacuum pump down the bottom. So what we do to get fuel through this processing system, we use the vacuum pump to pull fuel into the 90 litre tank through a 10 micron filter. So we know at that stage we're fairly clean, there's not too much big stuff lying in the tank. We then turn all the valves off and run the vacuum pump for about 30 minutes and that pulls all of the water out in a vacuum process. So when you pull a vacuum on a, on a liquid, anything that can't stay in suspension gets steamed out. So when the vacuum pump is running, you'll see steam coming out the top of the nozzle just there the little cap thing that'll have steam coming out of it and that's literally water coming out of the diesel and, uh, and and getting boiled off inside that tank once we're confident that there's no more water in the diesel we then push it through with compressed air via the one micron filter on the other side and that means that we've got dry diesel filtered down to one micron and at that stage we'll send it off to the lab for processing So Dame's just uh, checking out the diagnosed it. The diesel. <laughs> Apparently it's not too bad. Uh, we'll see. Although someone that knows what they're talking about may actually disagree with that analysis. <laughs> well we'll find out soon. <laughs> Bullshit. I just have to clear this. You're back alright? Yeah, it's fine. I just have to clear this thing. Right, that looks like it's gonna work, doesn't it? In case you're wondering why this isn't up to our normal build standard, it's because this is a prototype. That one will do. Right, that's my system. This is going to be a, a vacuum rated seal. Done. So Dame, how much of this is what you'll have in the engine bay when you're finished for processing oil? So this was going to be basically our system to process waste cooking oil on board to be able to burn it as fuel for our main engine. Um, I have been talking to a guy actually about using um, nozzles and compressed air as a totally different method of um, processing fuel and if we do that it means that we can process continuously we don't have to at, with this system here we can do 90 litres at a time every 30 minutes um, with his system you can process it continuously so you can do like thousands of litres an hour sort of thing by just basically running it through different nozzles I don't fully understand the system, um, he's, he's done it and he said that it works quite well and he's given me links to all of the commercially available nozzles to do all of this stuff and he said the nozzle is the thing that does all of the magic so you can 
um, you can't really build these nozzles. You, you may as well just buy them and then build everything else. So um, that's something that I'll be looking into. But f for now, this is our our prototype system that we were going to be putting into Brewpeg um, until we until further notice. Until that changes, like everything on this boat, it's a evolution. <laughs> and um, the original design was heat and this one is pressure yeah so version one we used an electric hot water cylinder to to lift it as hot as we could get it as slow as we could get it so that we don't get convection um, and then we let it cool overnight so that the oil and water separate water down the bottom oil at the top um, however we found that we couldn't get enough um, we couldn't get enough water out of the oil by doing that by using the vacuum system we were able to get a massive amount of, of water out of the oil comparatively like it was it was completely different um, with the air compressed air system, I'm pretty curious. I, I don't know a lot about it yet, um, but hopefully with that system, it'll make us even more efficient again. Mm. So learning curve, eh? Very much so, yeah. I'm in truth. Just going to see if this whole thing works still. Oh, cool. Check this one easy enough. It's off. It's on. It's off. So we just had to do a quick check on the pump. We pulled the guard off and made sure the belt and everything was good. So this is our outlet. So we've got the valve turned off. This is our ball valve for the vacuum pump. So that, that leads all the way down to the vacuum pump. That's turned on. This is our, uh, this gets turned off, but this is our pressure valve so that we can push the oil out once we're finished. And this here is our inlet pipe going over into the diesel. And this is a 10 micron filter in, this blue, in the blue bag housing here. So we've got that turned off at the second, but I need to open that up to allow the oil to go in. And this here is our fully custom vacuum rated bung. If you watched the video that I put up in the corner earlier, or if you know of that video, we killed one of our vacuum gauges because it wasn't a positive and negative gauge. And that's our replacement, is a rubber bung. I'll just get my assistant here to um, turn the switch on. Oh yeah, feel the horsepower. All right, so you can hear that. That's basically the pump sucking air. I do need to open the valve at the bottom. So we need to go through now, and basically crank this guy open. So we'll hear oil going in, in a second. Maybe, no we won't, because I've got that open. Now we'll hear oil going in. So what, that pump there, it's a two stage vacuum pump. It's creating a vacuum inside the big tank, which creates a vacuum inside that, which starts basically pulling oil up this pipe. I don't know if we'll see anything. Nothing at all. Yeah, and that will be theoretically filling up this tank. So this black line that comes off the bottom of the one micron filter goes all the way around and over into this tank here. We're just gonna dump it in that tank there. Less vacuum this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I think Dame is trying to get the boat moving now today. <laughs> A pressure boat. <laughs> All right. Do you want to turn the pump back on? Yeah. I'm only going to do like ten seconds. Yeah, you don't need much, eh? Hey? Yep. Uh, 
Okay, so that's off, that's off, that's off. All right, can you turn it back on? So we should see steam coming out of this, and then eventually it'll stop, and we know that there's no more water in the fuel. So that cap there, that silver cap in the middle, that should have steam coming out of it. You can kind of just make it out. Oh, that reel still. You can kind of see there's steam coming out of it. So that's literally water inside the fuel that's boiling off. So when you pull a vacuum on something, on a liquid, the more of a vacuum you've got on that liquid, the lower the boiling temperature. So what we're doing is literally boiling off the water that's inside that diesel. So by the time this process is finished, it'll take about 30 minutes, by the time the process is finished, we're going to have dry diesel. And you can see here, that at the moment we are pulling 22 and a half inches of mercury. So, pretty good. Um, what's that? It's nearly 0.8 of a bar. About maybe 0.78, something like that. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep that ticking away. And you can sort of see that steam really clearly coming off. Catching butterflies. <laughs> Are you butterfly hunting? I'm trying to get one to slow-mo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm driving, you're smiling, just really doing nothing. That's the thing I like about you. So it's been about probably quarter of an hour that that's been running at a guess and you can still sort of see that slight steam coming off it so we're getting close to the end it normally takes about 30 minutes all up depending on how bad the fuel is um, to start with it, it can take anything up to 30 minutes and the only way that you know that it's done is basically that steam stops coming off it so if you've got a particularly bad batch um, I, I'm guessing it's going to take sort of 40 50 minutes something like that and a good batch might only take 10 minutes Everything that we've done so far has been around about half an hour, so that's been both diesel and veg oil. So um, we'll see how this batch goes and then get it in the test can and send it off to the lab. <laughs> so I wandered over here, wandered parts, Stu's exhaust, and uh, I can only assume a random Trevor turned up and drew all over it in a vandalised way. Although in saying that, look, the little guy has a sun hat, so, you know, sun smart and all that. So you can see that cat, there's still fair amount of steam coming off so we're still probably about maybe five ten minutes away from it really um, being finished for this batch so that's what we're waiting for there's virtually nothing coming off it now this is the um, test kit that we get from Caterpillar so we use the um, Caterpillar agent in Australia to do the testing for us they've got a pretty decent fuel lab so the kit is pretty basic. What have we got? One test kit thingy. And postage. Awesome. Let's go and get this filled up. Okay, so I need to get diesel into this tiny little bottle with my massive, ridiculously oversized pumping system. It delivers about 9,000 litres a minute. So what I'm hoping to do, bucket. We're going to try and get some of it in there, scoop it out into the tiny bottle, and then dump the rest of it back in the big tank extremely possible that I may create a fountain of diesel throughout all of this.
Okay, before we finish with this job, we need to figure out customer name. Brewpeg. Machinery make. None of that's sample date. What is the date today? The 4th of April 2020. Diesel type. Bugger if I know. Fuel treatment added. Yes. Product name. Let me go and get it. Diesel biocide AC82. Redirect. Right, sample collection point. Um, bulk storage above ground. Fill out all spaces provided. Click sample, then cap firmly. Seal the cap bottle in the plastic bag provided. Right out. Insert bottle in the mailing tube with completed sample card, right? Place samples in provided satchel and mail to, yep, all right, and sign a piece of paper. Sweet. Let's get that underway. Tiny road trip time down the end of the road so that we can get to the post office. Standing underneath the lights Look into each other's eyes Tired snowflakes are coming down into water when they hit the ground I hear the sound of empty streets Yesterday has gone to sleep So all that's left So that's it for the diesel. We're going to send that off to the lab and get the results back um, and we'll update you in a future episode as to how that went and if we can actually use that fuel. Then Dame and I went for a walk along the coastline before heading back to Brewpeg. Let's enjoy it.